A very long time ago, in a distant land known as the 1990s, I was a lonely high school student with no friends and constant fear of others. I couldn't make eye contact with others and walked around in between classes with my head down and my eyes planted firmly upon my shoes. During class, I sat in the back and had my nose buried in fantasy novels. Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman, Terry Brooks, Connie Willis, Robert Jordan, Octavia Butler, these were my friends. And then one day, as I sat alone on the pavement, a girl came up to me and said, you're in my invertebrate zoology class, but I see you all the time. You're quiet and always by yourself. I bet you're really interesting. You should come play magic with us. During elementary school, I had been bullied on the schoolyard during recess and lunch on a daily basis, to the point that I eventually took to hiding out in the boys' bathroom. I remember the day some of my tormentors figured out where I was and what I was doing there. The fact I wanted escape seemed to compel them to be even more aggressive and even more merciless as one slammed me up against the bathroom wall, holding me in place, and the other repeatedly punched me in the stomach both of them laughing hysterically. When brought to the attention of my elementary school vice principal and then later the principal, I remember both had the same advice. Toughen up. The vice principal also added, you must be doing something to cause these incidents to continue happening. I wasn't sure what I was doing, except wanting to be left alone, but continue, the attacks did. In seventh grade algebra, several other kids unscrewed the tiny bolts from beneath their desks and threw these small metal screws at my ears. I remember the sharp sting and sound as the metal struck flesh. One screw missed, hit the chalkboard, alerting my teacher. He reprimanded me as I was the one surrounded by a pile of screws on the floor. I was almost suspended, but simply sent home as punishment. It was, in fact, like any time I was able to avoid or otherwise escape school, a blessing and a reprieve from my constant misery. By high school, as I mentioned, I was so terrified of others, so convinced every laugh was at me, every interaction with others a potential pain, that I was unable to make eye contact with anyone. My junior high had been a dropout factory, and I excelled there. Just showing up and paying the most minimal attention earned me endless praise and high marks from my teachers. Then I transferred to a high school magnet program for advanced biological and zoological studies. I had planned to become an animal biologist in those days, and this magnet school was taught by animal biologists and marine biologists and zoologists, people with PhDs, where AP classes were required, along with classes such as animal observation, environmental science, physical oceanography. I failed miserably in all those classes, struggling just to maintain C's while everyone else earned A's. I knew I'd never be an animal biologist. I was the only student in my graduating class not going on to a four-year college. Instead, I was going to take classes at a community college. One day, my favorite teacher came up to me. He said, I hear you're going to community college. Listen, don't sell yourself so short. There's so many colleges out there. Some of them don't care that much about who they take in. There's a college out there even for people like you. He had meant it to be kind. At least at this high school, which was essentially a school for nerds, I was no longer bullied. I sat, instead, alone during recess and lunch, finally, finally left alone, and I dove deep down into the world of fantasy literature. I read constantly, and soon my bedroom became a library filled with the complete Dragonlance Chronicles, Shannara series, everything by Mercedes Lackey, Andrea Norton, and Ursula Le Guin. And then one day that girl came up to me and said what every lonely person dreams of hearing. I bet you're really interesting. You should come play magic with us. Amazing how an act so simple and so small could have such an impact on my life. Never mind the fact that I wouldn't be here today on this YouTube channel had she not come over to me. But there is so much more that gift of magic and a sudden circle of friends gave me. Magic is a game that we outsiders are drawn to. We are often the outcasts, the freaks, the misunderstood, the abused 
the frightened, the deeply, deeply lonely. Our lives are out of control in one way or another, and we are drawn to magic because it is control. Unlike with life, there are clearly defined rules. I may not know what card my opponent is going to play, but I know when it can and cannot be played. I know what it does and what effect it has on the game state and what options I have to interact with it. In Magic the Gathering, I can tell people no, and the only things that happen to me in game are by the rules, rules we all agree to and understand. There's no one to corner me in the bathroom or punish me unfairly for the screws others have pelted me with. The only screws are oh, mana screw, and I can live with that and even work on my curve so as to help negate it. Magic is the one part, for many of us, the only part of our lives we can have this level of control over. That's why we become so attached to our commanders and our favorite decks, why so many of us play decks that aren't tier one or that are just a fragile combo that only sometimes works. It's because what we play in magic represents us. It's our way of interacting with and showing ourselves to one another. And suddenly I could make eye contact again. I knew how to talk to the other people in my new circle of friends. I could ask what their favorite cards were, or if they wanted to see my deck, or if trading a force of nature for a scrubland was a good deal. And slowly, bit by bit, we could learn and would learn and did learn to talk about other things, our parents and teachers and future. No one in my magic circle thought I should be ashamed of going to community college. Smart move, I remember one person saying. You'll get two years of GE classes out of the way for a fraction of the cost of a four-year. And I did, and then went on to graduate school, and two years of teacher training through the RET Comp program. From there, I taught at Tsinghua University and lived in China for two years before coming home to teach at community colleges. I taught English and always brought in a selection of science fiction and fantasy books to my classes. I emphasized the importance of these works, not just as escapism, but as a lens for viewing and understanding and above all questioning our own society and the directions we are headed in. I delighted in sharing my favorite works of literature with young adults. I reveled in encouraging students to go on to graduate school, as I had, and sharing with them the best paths to take in order to get there. The translation from that to a YouTube channel about Magic the Gathering isn't as jarring as you might think. Helping others discover and get the most from this game, whether it's getting the best bang for their buck, finding the right products, learning new and unusual decks, or just talking about fun new formats to try. It's all just teaching. It's all just helping others enjoy their life and maybe come together. My desire to help others is a selfish one. It is, at its core, greedy and twisted. I want so desperately to help others because I so desperately wanted help myself. I go through life trying to give what it is I want to be given, what we all want to be given, for that one moment when a stranger walks over to you, sitting alone, reaches out a hand and says, come with us. And this video is brought to you by my and many other people's local game store, Card Kingdom, a brick and mortar pillar of this community, as well as the Patreon support of viewers such as you. These are the people that keep Talarian Community College going and growing strong. So thank you.